We want to change our breathing patterns, improve our breathing during the day so that we have lighter, slower breathing during sleep. So we're going to go through the breathe light exercise and it's applicable for insomnia, for snoring and also for obstructive sleep apnea. It's actually a great exercise to, to practice before you go to sleep because it helps to activate the rest and digest response. Very often, if there's overstimulation of the mind, if there's a lot going on in the mind, a lot of thinking going on, it's going to impact our ability to fall asleep readily. If we have mouth breathing, which is causing resultant upper chest breathing, harder, faster breathing, we're more likely to stay in light sleep. And as a result, we're not getting the benefits of slow wave sleep. Slow wave sleep is so important in terms of the brain cleaning itself and also for us to wake up feeling really refreshed. And that's the way we should wake up feeling in the morning. Insomnia, for example, affects 30% of the population and 10% of people have chronic insomnia. Obstructive sleep apnea, which is involving collapse of the upper airways during sleep, and it could be a partial collapse or it could be a total collapse of the upper airway. This in turn affects between 25 to 50% of men and it affects about 10% of women up to about the age of 50 years of age, but it increases threefold thereafter. So both as men and women get older, obstructive sleep apnea becomes more prevalent. Snoring, on the other hand, is, is very common. And of course, it affects more men than females. When snoring gets to a point that gets more and more severe, it's a common factor also in obstructive sleep apnea. So we want to change our breathing patterns, improve our breathing during the day so that we have lighter, slower breathing during sleep. So what I would like you to do is to put one hand on your chest, one hand just above your navel, allow your shoulders to drop, and just tune into your breathing patterns. I think it's useful if you put a little bit of pressure with your hands against your chest and tummy. And you're using this as kind of a guidance or feedback that we want to have lighter breathing. So the whole purpose here is you're tuning into your breathing patterns. There's your breath coming into the body. And now I would like you to gently soft and then slow down the speed of your breathing, not to hold your breath. That's a soft breath in that looks really good. And now you have a relaxed and slow, gentle breath out. And to do it to a point at which you can sustain it. Because if you reduce it too much, you might lose control over your breathing. If you reduce the volume of air too little, you're not going to feel that sensation of air hunger. So we want to feel the sensation of air hunger. So you're taking a very soft and slow, gentle breath coming into your body. And then you're having a really relaxed, really relaxed and slow, gentle breath out. And using this as a means of breathing light and breathing slow to help activate the body's rest and digest response. But more importantly, if your breathing becomes a little bit unstable, you just take a rest for about half a minute or so. So just normally breathe for a half a minute and then you come back to it. So it's very normal that when, for example, you're doing the breathe light exercise, there's a point at which the air hunger may be a little bit too much and your breathing then gets faster. You might have involuntary contractions of the diaphragm. You might feel a little bit stressed with it. Then take a rest just as Ruth did for about 30 seconds and then go back to it. So at the start, you'll probably have to do this a few times. It's very normal. When you do the breathe light exercise, so just as Ruth is doing it there, She's taking a very soft and slow, gentle breath coming into her nose and a really relaxed and a slow and a gentle breath out. And it's just that you're softening the breath. There's nothing too complicated about it. It's really about breathing lighter. So you're slowing down the speed of the air coming into your nose. So as you breathe in root, that your breath in is almost imperceptible that you can hardly feel any air coming into your nose. And then as you breathe out, you're really having that slow and relaxed and gentle exhalation. You're allowing it to happen. So literally allowing the breath to soften to the point of the air hunger. There's your breath coming in and your breath has gone a little bit unstable there. You see that it's, it's picked mm. up and it's speeded up and then you just take a rest. And that's normal. And again, the same thing happens. And it, this is going to be happening to you as well. So don't get too frustrated with it. It's normal. You're still making progress. And it takes just that little bit of practice and perseverance you're slowing down your breathing. Ideally, you do it with relaxation. So we try again, bring a feeling as well of relaxation throughout the body and be conscious that you're not deliberately interfering with the breathing muscles. And all you're doing is just a little bit of pressure with your hands against your chest and tummy. In actual fact, use 
the pressure with your hands against your chest and tummy as a means of reducing the volume of air that you are breathing and let your hands do the work. Now, why do we practice this? Because if we have a strong chemosensitivity to the accumulation of carbon dioxide, our breathing is harder and faster. And harder and faster breathing will imply that our breathing is harder and faster during sleep. So it increases turbulence, it increases negative pressure, and it also causes more unstable breathing during obstructive sleep apnea. So we want to reduce the body's chemosensitivity to carbon dioxide, have a really slow, relaxed, gentle breath out there, and then a very, very soft and slow, gentle breath in. Soft, 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 and a really relaxed and slow, gentle breath out. And I would like you to soften your breathing even a little bit more. So that's your slow, gentle, relaxed breath out. And now that really soft breath in, hide your breathing so I don't see as much movement. So you're hiding your breathing, not to hold your breath at the top, now to just gently slow down your breath, gently slow down your breathing. So you're having that slow, relaxed exhalation, and then that really soft, that soft breath in, instead of just the full breath coming in. So this is a perfect exercise to practice, but it's getting the balance. And pay attention to if there's any change in the saliva in your mouth. Ideally, when you practice this, you want to be activating the rest and digest response. So think about the word rest, you feel sleepy. So this exercise might make you feel tired, so you start to yawn more, it's a good sign. And that's really what you want before sleep. And also pay attention to the saliva in the mouth, because if you are switching on the relaxation response, the rest and digest response, you will have increased watery saliva in your mouth. And this in turn means that your body is ready for the digestion of food, but it's conducive to falling asleep quicker. If we have overstimulation of the mind, it's more difficult to fall asleep. But if we can switch off, and we are doing this by changing our physiology. So always think of the communication from the body up to the brain. So here, what we want to do is we want to prepare the brain for sleep. We're telling the brain that we're safe. But if on the other hand, we have a habit of breathing fast and breathing up our chest, the body is telling the brain that we're not safe. And the brain isn't going to allow us to fall asleep because the brain is here to protect us. So that's the breathe light exercise. It's the most important exercise in terms of improving your breathing from a biochemical dimension. It's about practicing it to the point that you have air hunger, getting the degree of air hunger right, not too little, not too much. Not by deliberately interfering with the breathing muscles, but instead just by gently softening and slowing down breathing with a light pressure with the hands against the chest and tummy. When we improve our breathing from a biochemical dimension, our breathing is naturally lighter during sleep. Therefore, there's less turbulence in the nasal airway and also in the throat. Therefore, snoring and obstructive sleep apnea, the risk of it reduces.